What is up guys? It's your girl Jubilee and today we're going to be talking about the new Gen 8 Pokemon games on the Nintendo Switch and imagining what they would be like if they were set in Britain. Don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you're new. It helps me out a ton and it doesn't cost you anything. Now in my last video, everything I do not want in the Gen 8 Pokemon games on the Nintendo Switch, I said I did not want to see the new Pokemon games be set in Britain. And I still kind of stand by that, but I got so many comments yelling at me for saying that. Like, how dare you? We've never had a British game. It would be so cool, blah, blah, blah. Fine. Let's just pretend that the new games are going to be in Britain. There's actually been a rumor going around that they are, so it's definitely a possibility. What would that be like? Now, the first thing that we need for our British Pokemon games is a really good name. Every Pokemon series comes with two different names, Sun and Moon, Red and Blue, etc. So what are the two names for our British games? I'm thinking Pokemon Brexit and Pokemon Bremaine. Why do you guys always have to put BR in front of everything? It's a little weird. Oh well. And now that we've figured out the names of these games, it's time to choose your starter. Like all Pokemon games, there will be a grass, water, and fire type to choose from. For the grass type, I was thinking Peter Rabbit, because of course he's a rabbit. Okay, grass, British, it works. Paddington Bear is the water type, because I think he's been in a raincoat before, and that weird scene from Paddington 2 where he's like washing a window with his butt. Yeah, so water type. And lastly, the fire type will be Gromit from Wallace and Gromit because fire is leftover and Gromit is a dog and somehow they'll make him firefighting because of course they will. I personally would go with Paddington Bear because I always choose the water starter and he's adorable. But let me know in the comments below which one you would choose. Now that you've chosen your starter, you're ready to set out on your Pokemon journey. That means that you're going to be meeting tons of amazing wildlife that can only be found in Britain. There's so many different things. Let's take a look at what we can find. Okay, we've got a red deer, a squirrel, another deer, some birds, some more birds, another deer, a hedgehog. Oh, a cool bat. Yeah, we definitely need more of these animals in Pokemon. Oh, another deer. F it, let's just go with dragons. Dracarys. Okay, so maybe the wildlife choices weren't so great, but Let's just take a look at the legendaries. I'm sure we could come up with something really cool. We need something to represent the rich history of Britain and also something to show how modern and, and you know, with it they are, huh? Okay, now we got our super awesome legendaries. It's time to come up with a mystical mythical. I was thinking you could have a really cool name like Benadryl Cabbage Patch or Bunnery Rapidash or Banana Face Cooter Snatch. And it would be really overpowered, but it wouldn't have any really cool backstory. You just have to go to GameStop 10 months after the game came out and pick up a card to redeem. Since they're basing these games on Britain, why not source some local talent to write the storyline? JK Rowling would be perfect for the job. She's known for being a wonderful children's storybook author. And as a bonus, in 10 years, she'll tweet out that Pikachu was pansexual the whole time. Let's rewind a bit. At the beginning of the game, you'll meet your mother, who will be Maggie Smith because she's a f***ing national treasure, okay? After you meet your mother, it's time to say hello to your rival, and Gen 8 will finally bring back the badass rivals we used to get in the Pokemon games, who actually challenge you and aren't just there to try to be your friend. So of course, no one is more suited for this role than Queen Elizabeth II. Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking. She's too old and nice and weak to be a rival, but no! This woman is the longest reigning monarch in history. She has seen some shit. Queen Elizabeth will fuck you up and have her corgis clean up the mess. And she ain't afraid to smack talk you and tell it like it is. She will shit on you and make you cry. I can't think of anyone more perfect for the role. Our British Pokemon game needs a professor and I can't think of anyone better for the job than Professor Dumbledore. Just like past professors in the Pokemon games, Dumbledore has a ton of experience giving a young child too much responsibility, 
traumatizing them horribly and counting on them to single-handedly save the world. It's been a while since Pokemon has added a new typing to the Pokemon games, and I think they're due for another one. A lot of people want a sound type, but to make it more regionally relevant, I think that we need a T type. You may think that's just water with herbs, but no. It's T, bitch. T types will f you up with moves such as throwing shade, drag her, bitch, sip the tea, and my personal favorite, but that's none of my business. Of course, T type will get its own gym leader, and I can think of no one better than Mrs. Potts from Beauty and the Beast because she's literal T. For the gym leaders in these British Pokemon games, we need some really British people to fill in those roles. The fairy type gym leader would be Emma Thompson because she's goodness personified, and what else is there to say? The fire type leader would be Idris Elba because he's hot as f. Let's be real. For the dragon type gym leader, we'd have Daenerys from Game of Thrones because she's the mother of dragons, so of course she is. And Julie Andrews would be the grass type gym leader because of really deep and thought out reasons that definitely aren't just because she was twirling around the grass in that one scene where she's singing about uh, the hills are alive with the sound of music. Okay, it's just because she's walking around in the grass while she's singing that. Jon Snow is the ghost type gym leader because he came back from the dead. So when you defeat him, you tell him, You know nothing, Jon Snow. After you defeat all the gym leaders, you get to take on the Elite Four, which would of course be the Beatles, because they have to be in there somewhere, and there's four of them, and it just fits, and guess we have to. Like, I'll jam to Hey Jude, but I'm not going for it, you know? And next up is the champion, which is Freddie Mercury, because of We are the champions, no time for losing. Shut up, it's clever. Another thing that everyone has been waiting for is a new evolution. We need something really British and really cool, and I have the perfect idea. Shakespearean. Doesn't ever actually attack, but it writes plays and poetry that you'll be forced to read 400 years later, so when you really think about it, it's the most devastating evolution of all time. Of course, our British Pokemon games need an evil team. We'll have Scar from The Lion King as the evil team leader because he was randomly British, even though his brother was American and everyone else in his family was American, but he was randomly British. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. He was definitely evil as f because he literally killed his brother and scarred an entire generation of children. Oh yeah, we'll have the hyenas as the grunts. These British games need some British towns, so I was thinking a Lord of the Rings town, a Harry Potter town. F Narnia, though. There's no Narnia town. We just have Mr. Tumnus wandering around the world lost. Also, he's a Pokemon now. Another town in these British games will just be full of Americans doing really bad British accents. Oh, I'm very sorry. I don't know anything about all of that. You know, we'll have that guy from Mary Poppins. Good luck, we're a buff when I shake hands with you. Keanu Reeves and Dracula. And I've seen many strange things already. Don Cheadle in Ocean's Eleven. All right, chaps. Hang on to your niggas. Just literally a whole town of Americans pretending to be British really badly. <laughs> In the past, Pokemon games have had other ways to compete besides just battling Pokemon. So I'm thinking that the Great British Baking Show will be the competition of these games. Basically, you'll just have Paul Hollywood get oranger and oranger as you progress, and Mary Berry just keeps asking for more booze as you're baking. Well, that's it for my British Pokemon games. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. And if you have any cool ideas for these games, let me know in the comments below. Shout out to my British PokeTubers out there. I hope this doesn't offend you. I know you may be thinking these are really dumb stereotypes of British people, and you're right, they are. Deal with it. Now that you've chosen your sturdy- <laughs> I was thinking you could have a really cool name, like Benadryl Cabbage Patch, or Bunnery Rapidash, or- <laughs> I was thinking you could have a really cool name, like Benadryl Cabbage Patch, or Bunnery Rapidash, or- Banana face cooter snatch. Patrick Stewart would be the psychic gym leader because, I don't know, he was like Magneto or something. Oh, Professor X, goddammit.
Patrick Stewart would be the psychic type gym <laughs> Patrick Stewart would be the psychic type gym leader because uh, Professor X. <laughs> you may think that's just water with herbs, but wait, what the? F Our Pokemon games need a professor, and I can't think of. I'm fine. Our Pokemon games need a professor. <clears throat> Our Pokemon game. No shit. Cancel everything I just said.